One year ago, Libya was scheduled to hold national elections in a bid to unite the country's warring factions under a single, democratically elected government. That goal was never achieved after Libya postponed the scheduled vote due to the fierce rivalry between eastern and western governments. Now calls are growing for the country to hold elections and some Libyan politicians are signaling they're on board. The head of the Tripoli-based unity government, Abdul Hamid Debaiba, welcomed a call by the UN's envoy to Libya to hold elections. Debaiba, who was elected interim prime minister in 2021 to lead the country towards elections, has seen his premiership challenged by Pati Bashaga. He heads the rival government of national stability from its base in Sirte. Last month, the UN warned that Libya was at risk of petitioning itself after it failed to hold elections last year. Violent clashes between supporters of the two rival governments claimed dozens of lives back in August. Now to further discuss the latest tensions in Libya, joining me now from Lisbon is Ricardo Fabiani. He is the North Africa Project Director at Crisis Group. And from Exeter, the UK, Parhat Polat. He's a researcher specializing in North African geopolitics and security. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Ricardo, how fragile is the situation in Libya? And do you see any signs of reconciliation by the warring sides in the country? There is no real sign of reconciliation or any progress whatsoever when, uh, you know, if it, when it comes to the various dialogue tracks that are being pursued by the Libyan actors. Uh, the reality is that we are stuck in an endless cycle of initiatives with no clear UN leadership, with no clear international consensus on what should be done on Libya. There is a lot of talk on elections. There is a lot of talk on the possibility of forming a new unity government. But the truth is that all the actors that are part of the various dialogue initiatives and diplomatic initiatives are very comfortable in their positions. And they don't really feel any pressure to go towards uh, some sort of transition or some sort of uh, uh, you know new phase in Libyan politics. Also, because the levels of violence are relatively contained for the time being, and uh, the situation is, as far as Libya is concerned, fairly stable. Not completely stable, of course, mm -hmm. but fairly. I would say calm. So far, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do all parties want to hold elections? And do you think the past electoral, uh, electoral uh, discrepancies have been resolved? I mean, uh, stability in Libya can only be achieved through United Nations-led peace uh, process, which could lead to parliamentary and presidential elections. But unless there are conditions are met, such as, you know, there is no such... Uh, you know, widely accepted constitutions, and there is no such security across the country. Without having uh, right conditions for uh, elections, pushing Libyans to hold elections won't solve any remaining issues. I mean, United Nations has been trying to find a solution to uh, this crisis, but we have witnessed in 2021, in December, uh, Libya couldn't take, uh, you know, at the stage to take elections because of the you know, uh, divisions among rival parties on eligibility criteria for candidates, uh, as we have seen some division, uh, you know, divisive figures like Saif Islam al-Qaddafi and Khalifa Haftar who want to run for the election, which caused, uh, you know, further division uh, between East and West. So without having right conditions and, and mm -hmm. uh, having conducive environment, uh, I don't think elections will take place anytime soon. You both in mentioned the importance of a UN role in the country. Putting that aside, uh, Ricardo, um, could the latest normalization efforts in the region by the UAE, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Qatar help solve Libya's political stalemate? Or do they have diverging interests in the country? Obviously, any steps towards normalization is good and positive for Libya. These are all countries that have an important role to play uh, in the Libyan politics and in the stabilization of this country. The problem is that they have different interests, different agendas, and reconciling these agendas and these interests and making sure that there is some progress and some sort of stabilization of the country and the beginning of a real transition towards elections needs a role uh, of stewardship, of leadership by an external actor, by an international organization that has this, that kind of legitimacy. And without clear leadership by the UN, by the international community, without some sort of attempt to create a clear consensus on the steps towards uh, transition in Libya, this normalization, this sort of regional reconciliation will not be enough. I think it's a necessary 
but insufficient condition for uh, transition and uh, progress in the Libyan file. So, Farhat, how would Turkey and Egypt's differences on uh, Libya play out now that the two leaders have agreed on normalizing ties? I mean, foreign policy is driven by uh, long-term national interests. While this is the case for uh, Libya and uh, between six and ten countries involved in the Libyan conflict, uh, each country has their unique, uh, you know, interest in in, in Libya. And but since 2019, uh, the landscape in Libya has changed significantly when Turkey interfered openly and prevented Haftar forces to take the capital from, uh, at the time, GNA, Libya's re uh, internationally recognized government. Now, uh, there is a, uh, some that th th has been taken some steps to uh, find a, a political solution or uh, reconciliation process between uh, Turkey and Egypt, which is a good sign. It's a significant development, which definitely will have positive impact uh, on the Libyan conflict, which both sides are opposite sides. So. Uh, it, it will help to uh, ease the tensions on the ground. And uh, as Ricardo mentioned earlier, since uh, 2020, there is no such uh, major armed conflict uh, between East and West. Uh, still, there is a de facto ceasefire in place. But uh, the further step must be taken towards uh, stability of the country by holding elections when the right conditions yes. are Met and so, Ricardo, the 2019 maritime deal uh, between Turkey and Libya gives actually Egypt a vast maritime area, and Cairo stands to benefit from this agreement. Are we likely to see some changes to the Egyptian policies uh, towards this deal and the latest energy deal struck between the two countries? Well, I don't think so. The reason is that Egypt has an interest uh, in, uh, I would say, solidifying or strengthening its relations across the region, uh, uh, of course, with you know Cyprus, Israel, with Greece, uh, also with France, with all the countries that are really part of the uh, gas uh, cooperation forum. And the point here is that while Egypt has obviously some direct possible uh, advantages from the maritime deal, the reality is that this deal uh, is opposed by all of these countries, and Egypt uh, is more likely to stand with its allies on this point than to try and benefit unilaterally. The thing is that Egypt is trying to position itself as an energy hub yes. in the region. It wants to be a regional leader. So uh, it's clear that uh, they think their interest is more in opposing this deal and standing with their allies rather than uh, breaking ranks and uh, trying to get closer uh, or accepting that, uh, that agreement. So, Verhat, how has uh, Russia's attack on Ukraine, which pushed global energy prices to um, record levels, spurred um, regional countries to seek stability in Libya? How important is the Libyan oil now? I mean, Libya has one of the largest oil reserves in Africa, and but unfortunately, because of the conflict, uh, the country has not been able to produce as much as they can uh, for a number of reasons, as we mentioned earlier. You know, there is a still security issues and so on. So uh, the international uh, dynamics, which will uh, help uh, to uh, you know rival sides, either internal and external, and their backers, to find kind sign, uh, kind of. Uh, Re reconciliation and because Libyan's uh, oil it's uh, it's it's crucial to European markets and and that for that reasons uh, I think uh, uh, in the future in the coming uh, months or uh, uh, we we will see some 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 sort of developments as we have seen uh, between Turkey and Libya's Tripoli government recently they signed an agreement and which is you know with an aim to <clears throat> enhance the cooperation between two. Uh, two countries to export for natural gas in Eastern Mediterranean Sea, uh, which has a significant impact on Eastern Mediterranean geopolitics. And, yes. and, and that will... Yes. Yeah, please continue. Wrap it up your sentence. No, I, I, I mean, I, I was trying to say, you know, the, 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 the current the <clears throat> international dynamics will help to, especially when... Uh, th there is a uh, need of energy, especially for European markets, will uh, help to ease the tensions between rival yes. parties. But apart, mm -hmm. uh, apart from Greece, uh, unfortunately, is pursuing more maximalist policies that avoid diplomacy. Uh, you, you know, in, uh, when it comes to Eastern Mediterranean uh, dispute, uh, you know, instead of 
Yes. All right, so um, yeah. I want to continue with Ricardo uh, because we're running out of time. Um, for almost a decade, the Libyan uh, conflict has festered and the European Union has mostly looked away. Has the time come for European countries to engage with Libya more or is it already too late? I don't think necessarily this is too late, uh, but the problem that I see right now is that uh, Europe has other geopolitical priorities at the moment, and its number one priority is, of course, the war in Ukraine. And it doesn't really have the bandwidth and the political capital to spend on trying to fix Libya. The interests of Europe, unfortunately, at the moment is to avoid any major eruption of violence in Libya and to make sure that energy flows continue to be uh, stable and secure from Libya to Europe. As long as these two conditions are met, it's unlikely that we're going to see any major uh, commitment or effort uh, by Europe uh, in Libya. I think there will be, there will continue to be, of course, uh, some sort of lower profile and normal sort of engagement with this issue. But we, I don't think we're going to see any major push. Uh, um, and we are also seeing this with the UN right now, the level of international engagement and the support behind the current UN envoy is fairly low compared to what we have seen in the past, mm -hmm. simply because Libya is no longer a major priority. So um, the divisions, Farhad, between uh, France and Italy had already uh, split the European Union and weakened its position in Libya. Could they form a unified from now or will their interests continue to differ? Italy and France, they used to have different policies when it comes to Libyan conflict. Uh, France wants to secure Sahara region in terms of security, uh, interest and in which Libya plays significant role and also wants to gain uh, some oil contracts through uh, either uh, through Haftar or Tiropoli government. And Italy sees Libya as a former colony and wants to preserve its economic interests. And any uh, Italian giant or energy company has uh, been operating in Libya since 1960s, so has economic interests and wants to preserve that. So Italy, that, therefore, Italy seems to be closer to Tripoli government than eastern part. But uh, most recently, because of the energy crisis, France and Italy seem to uh, have uh, similar uh, uh, agenda or similar policy, which will help, uh, you know, uh, uh, Libyan oils to, you know, flow to, to uh, yes. you know, to Europe. Uh, which is a good sign. But in the meantime, maybe there could be some sort of cooperation between uh, Turkey and Italy moving forward. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. You're welcome.